Thank you. It's a delight to finally be here. Uh, it, is, it is a great place, and I so enjoyed uh, being the commencement speaker a couple of years ago. And I'm so pleased that the uh, coming commencement speaker, my good friend Judy Livingston, who really represents the best in our profession, and I couldn't be more delighted to hear that. Um, this is a great day, the launch of the Incubator Project. I want to uh, thank uh, President Stuart Rabinowitz uh, and Dean Eric Lane for inviting me and for their leadership of the Maurice A. Dean School of Law here at Hofstra University, which ensures that your students understand the nobility of our profession and their responsibility to serve others. Today, I think Hofstra is the perfect, demonstrates it is the perfect example of leadership in our profession. Um, I'm so impressed with, with Stuart and, uh, and the way the university is run. And again, uh, I so enjoyed being here and seeing the strength and vitality of, uh, of the law school and the university. And Eric, who I've known for so many years in so many of different, his different roles, you couldn't have a better uh, a dean. This, this, um, this Access to Justice Incubator Project is exciting to me, not only to the president, not only to the dean, but it's exciting to the chief judge. And I know it's exciting to this university and this law school and your leaders. There really is a crisis in our country, in our state, uh, in relation to civil legal services for the poor and out here in Nassau County, without question. We are at best meeting 20% of the needs of the most vulnerable in society, and 20% could be a, a uh, too high a number. There are 2.3 million people a year unrepresented in the courts of the state of New York. In New York City, the Legal Aid Society turns away three out of four people that come to them for help, and that's an improvement. They used to turn away eight out of nine. And in Nassau and Suffolk counties, it's very much the same. Our providers just are hard-pressed financially and can only do so much. That's why we've established the task force to enhance civil legal services in our state headed by Elaine Barnett, the former president of the Legal Services Corporation in Washington. We are really delighted that this year we've been able to obtain in the state budget $55 million in public funding for civil legal services. Um, and in the coming year's budget that we have just submitted, we are seeking $70 million in civil legal services monies and those monies are requested by the judiciary because what happens to the poor and the disadvantaged who just want the fundamentals of life and want legal representation to help them get there is not tangential to what we do in the judiciary. It is absolutely front and center to our constitutional mission to foster equal justice. This is what we do. This is what we are all about. And I think it should be clear to all of us, if the judiciary and the profession do not stand up for those in need of legal representation in our state, nobody else will. It is our responsibility, and it is our mission. And we are delighted that we have by far the most public funding in the country for legal services for the poor, but you know what? It's just the tip of the iceberg. It really just begins to address what needs to be done. That's why on top of public funding, the other pillar of what we need to do is pro bono work by the bar. The, I'm proud of the state bar and their efforts with their uh, uh, Empire State Council program. I'm proud of the local bars here in Nassau County, in Suffolk, in Queens, uh, all around our state that have done so much pro bono work. 
I'm delighted at the Lawyer Emeritus Program. Uh, Stuart was talking about age. We want all these baby boomers. I don't, I don't know, I'm too young to know about those people. <laughs> but we want all of them to want to do pro bono work as they're slowing down in their practices and winding down their practices, to understand the satisfaction that comes from pro bono work. And we are also proud that New York is the first state in the country to require law students to contribute 50 hours of pro bono work before they can be admitted to the bar. The bottom line is that aspiring lawyers must embrace the core values of our profession, which above all is about service to others before they can call themselves a lawyer in New York. This is so critical. This is what our value system is about. This is what has made lawyers, this profession, a truly noble profession. And you know, we hear all the lawyer jokes and all of this uh, uh, that comes about. Well, you know what? And I say this sincerely. I don't think they're funny. I think this is a noble profession. So much of the social progress in our country, in our state, is due to the efforts of lawyers, of lawyers who look to more than their own pecuniary interest. That's what lawyers are about. That's what it means to be a lawyer. And that's why it's so important that new lawyers understand that, understand that being a lawyer is about service to others. So I think those are such two basic things, that society must value uh, legal services for the poor in the, in the way of public funding. And it's just as important as schools and hospitals and housing and all the things that are priorities in our society. And it is equally important that lawyers get it, and I believe that they do, that this is what we do as lawyers. But there still is required more. There's a fundamental disconnect in our society and in uh, a legal representation here in New York and around the country. And that is all these terrific law students coming out of law schools with all this debt, with declining legal employment and no jobs out there, not no jobs, but much uh, uh, fewer in the way of jobs. And you'll have that on the one side of it. And then on the other side, you have this dire need of the most vulnerable in society to have legal representation. There's something wrong there. There's something missing when you have so many talented people coming out of law school and looking for jobs, can't find them, and yet people desperately need help. And we need new ideas. And we're all working on those new ideas, the Bar Association, uh, uh, the judiciary, and the law schools. <coughs> and it's crystal clear to me today that this great law school is focusing on this issue really with a laser-like approach. There is, there is a need for our graduates, from graduates at Hofstra and so many other law schools around the country, to serve those who need help the most. And, and this is so basic on a number of levels. It's not only that you're serving people who need your assistance, you're getting the practical experience that you need to be a lawyer. So the launch of the Access to Justice Incubator Project, it to me is just the right step at just the right time. And I say that sincerely. It is the kind of creative thinking that we're trying to get all law schools to do. As Eric knows, every year we have a, uh, a convocation of all the law schools where we talk about what the role of law schools uh, is in terms of access to justice and meeting the needs of the poor. And to me, establishing a public service law firm for recent graduates doing pro bono, low bono, whatever you want to call it, is really such an ingenious, creative way to look at this.
that serves everybody's interests. The people who are being, who need the legal representatives, representation, the graduates who need jobs and need experience and need to have the values of what it means to be a lawyer. Um, it's aimed at people at 200% of the poverty level, which is really what we're doing in the task force, that same uh, uh, qualification we think is right. You're talking about people of 200% the, uh, the poverty level. You're talking about a family of four who earns $44,000 a year. Go have your house foreclosed on or be evicted or have a consumer credit case or whatever the issue might be. Those are people, this is not just about people who have no resources whatsoever. This is about people who have jobs and families and are doing their share and yet cannot afford legal representation. A full year of practical skills at the beginning of one's career is such a fabulous gift. And I know they're not looking at it as a gift but it's such a fabulous thing to give a young lawyer to be able to help people for a year in a law firm that isn't just about, and, and let me make crystal clear, our profession is not about our own pecuniary interest. It's again about serving others. And when you, people who are gonna serve in this incubator project will understand that like no one else will, like lawyers who just go out into a big firm, I don't think can begin to understand. And I'm proud that this is a partnership with the court system, whether it be uh, Judge Morano, Judge Diamond, uh, um, Judge Adams, all of our people in the courts, all of our judges who have been so helpful in this project, I am proud of them. Partnerships are what the legal profession and the academy is all about, what the judiciary is all about. You're not only partnering with the courts, but with local community organizations and with local providers. And I couldn't be more ecstatic that the, these monies that I talked about before, this uh, uh, $55 million this year, and we hope to have $70 million uh, in, the car, in the coming uh, academic year, is not just monies that are out there, but help real people in real situations and to help to provide some seed money for such a glorious project as this gives me such pleasure that this is not just, again, about, gee, give us some money and all of a sudden you don't see it. It's about helping people. So I, I couldn't be happier about that. Um, the areas that you've identified for the incubator, uh, incubator project to work on are just terrific guardianships healthcare, foreclosures, evictions, eventually personal safety, uh, public benefits are exactly what we should be doing. What could be better? There are so many areas, but these are really right at the top of what we're looking for. Uh, it's ambitious, uh, 300 cases, 100 to 150 clients, and again, not so easy to do, but I'm a firm believer in ambition and being bold and not being timid. And I don't think this law school is timid at all. I think it's bold and absolutely great. And I think it's a place where we, we, we dream and we, we, for our graduates and for our society and for the people of this community. And I have absolutely no doubt, and I say this with total conviction, that this law school will lead the way in the country in making access to justice a part of, a, of the fabric of the law school community. It's not enough to talk about it. It's gotta be a part of what we do. And at this law school, I know it is, and I, and I tell you, and I've said this to Eric, and Eric has heard me uh, talk about this. I've had law school deans tell me that, you know, we're not in the access to justice business. Well, I've got news for them. We are in the access to justice business. I am, the law school is, the profession is, and what I'm so pleased that at Hofstra Law School, uh, this dean, this university president realized that recognized with a strength and conviction 
that they're in the access to justice business. And this is what we do as lawyers. We don't serve our own parochial or insular uh, interests. We serve people. That's what's made us. We serve those people most indeed. That's what's made this such a noble profession that is admired throughout this country and throughout this world. Look at the lawyers in the United States. Look at what we've done. And staying true to our principles and never, never, never compromising or only being concerned about ourselves is so important. And that's, that's what this project today, to me, is all about. I want to thank the president, the dean, all of you at Hofstra, at the Maurice A. Dean Law School, all of you for recognizing what this just wonderful profession is all about, making us all proud to be lawyers. So I thank you so much. It's an honor to be here with you today at the launch of this really, truly great project. I love Hofstra. I love being with all of you. Thank you so much. Thank you.